Welcome to Ask Good Broncos. I'm Brandon Perna, under the weather, also under the cap, and we have breaking news. Yes, ba 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 breaking news. And no, I have not uncovered Donald Trump's real tax returns, but instead uncovered this about the newest Denver Bronco, Kasim Edibale. So that's something I always wanted to do. So when you told me I put on the music with the lights, I was like, let's do this. That's right. The outside linebacker and special teams contributor tried out for the WWE. Was it a real tryout? Probably not. More of an experience. But why is this important? Why is this relevant, may you ask? Well, wasn't there another legendary NFL outside linebacker who also dabbled in pro wrestling? Yeah. Hall of Famer Kevin Green. How about that challenge? John Elway just signed a future Hall of Fame outside linebacker completely under the radar, and I, along with Mike Middleton on Twitter, are the only ones who noticed. That's good, bro. I know what you're thinking. Am I grasping, reaching here to tie a comparison together? between a Hall of Fame linebacker and the newest linebacker for the Broncos? Of course I am. It's the off season, I have nothing better to do. What am I going to talk about college basketball? No thanks, I don't discuss athletes who don't get paid. Now check this out. Kevin Green and Kasim Edibale both barely started any games in their first three seasons. Green had zero actual starts and Edibale had two. Kevin Green totaled 13 and a half sacks in his first three seasons, and Adebale has eight. It wasn't until his fourth season that Green grabbed opposing quarterbacks by the balls and said, that's a sack, son. 16 and a half sacks during his fourth season. Adebale is poised to make a significant leap in performance based on Kevin Green's history and me tying these two players together. Will he get 16 and a half sacks? Probably not, but I'd guess 15. Maybe 14 and a half, since he has to share some with Von Miller. I mean, the name Edibale translates to the word green in Turkish, for Christ's sakes. Probably. Again, if I'm being really honest, do I think Kasim will have as good of a career as Kevin Green? No. I think it's nearly impossible for him to match what Kevin Green did week in and week out in the wrestling ring. I mean, Green was wrestling during prime time wearing Panther Letterman jackets. On the football field, though, it should be pretty easy for Kasim to finish ahead of Green's 160 career sack total and become a first ballot Hall of Famer. The Edibale signing really serves two purposes for the Broncos. First, he'll be an option to replace some of the production as a pass rusher with the retirement of Demarcus Ware, who only finished his career with 138.5 career sacks. Shane Ray will not move into the starting role, even though he improved quite a bit last season because Edibale is destined for football glory. Kasim will also be contributing on special teams, which is important because our favorite special teamer, Kayvon Webster, signed a two-year deal with the Los Angeles Rams, as you can see with this Bleacher Report article. Oh wait, what's that in the right corner? A Tony Romo face? You just, you just can't escape Tony Romo. He's fucking everywhere. Specifics about Webster's contract have not been revealed, but it's estimated he will make $4 million a year over a two-year deal with incentives that could push his total up to $12 million. Webster will be reuniting with former Broncos defensive coordinator son of bum Wade Phillips, which makes me happy. I think Webster walked into a great situation. We'll get a chance to start with a defensive coordinator who already understands his strengths and will earn what salary cap experts refer to as a fuckload more money than he would have made with the Broncos. I did defeat the crooked Vic Lombardi this week in the Broncos country's favorite media personality tournament on Mile High Report. Right across the nutsack, friend! I now will battle Adam Schefter, so make sure you come back on Monday and vote. Each voting period lasts 24 hours and occurs every Monday. Your vote is more valuable each round, and according to my sources, take that, Schefter. I will need all of your support to beat the legend. You gotta shake your hemp oil. Time for my dose. Mm. 
Yes, I take Charlotte's Web hemp oil every day. And as a reminder to why I take it, just look up patent number 6630507. That patent is held by the US government and it states very clearly at the top of the page, the patent lists the use of certain cannabinoids found within the cannabis sativa plant as useful in certain neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and HIV dementia. That's from your government, friends. I'm trying to prevent Alzheimer's in my brain because I have a long history of it in my family. I'm just trying to show you where the evidence is. Read up, see if Charlotte's Web can help you, cwhemp.com, and you use my promo code, that's good, for 10% off your order. I know I said I don't discuss basketball in my crooked Vic Lombardi video, but I never said anything about potatoes and basketball together. About a week after scoring his 30,000th point, in the NBA, Dirk Nowitzki received this potato in the mail. There's nothing more flattering than receiving your self-portrait in the mail stamped on the tastiest but least attractive vegetable on earth. Dirk is really the potato of the NBA. He's been around forever, is really good, and nobody talks about him because he's not attractive on the outside. Just like un potato. Apparently a company rejected by Mark Cuban on Shark Tank sent the tater to Dirk. I believe Kevin from Shark Tank invested in the company that sends personal messages stamped on potatoes. If, if that's a real fucking business, it gives me new hope. My business, Pernips, which are turnips for your nips, will succeed. We all know edible panties are not healthy. So if you wanna spice up your sex life while also being conscious about what you eat, get my turnips for your nips. Put them on your partner, put them on yourself, and eat away. These bad boys are high in fiber, potassium, and vitamin C. That's right, the immune-boosting vitamin C, which means you can have turnip sex without condoms since it's nearly impossible to get an STD when you're eating healthy. Turnips, turnips for your nips. A salad we can all toss. Trademark pending 2017. Someone on Twitter made the comment that John Elway is taking the San Antonio Spurs approach by bringing in foreign football players. This is an interesting point because Kasim Edibale grew up in Hamburg, Germany. Menelik Watson grew up in Manchester, England. Adam Gotsis uh, is from Melbourne, Australia. Damata Pekka was born in LA but grew up in American Samoa. And Paxton Lynch has no home country as he was of course born in the bowels of a pirate ship somewhere on the high seas. Two of this year's five free agent signings are foreign born. And now we know the reason that John Elway went to Washington DC to the Republican Victory Party is clear. No, it was not to talk to Tony Romo. It was to talk to President Donald Trump to ensure that he would not deport any of the foreign players Elway wanted to sign. Trump told Elway he couldn't make any promises about Gotsis and Watson, but that Edibale was safe since both he and the linebacker had a common background in professional wrestling. WWF, WCW, WWE, who knows exactly where they all wrestled, but they have a, a, a common thread. That's what I do here at That's Good Sports. I connect the dots. From Kevin Green, to Kasim Edibale, to John Elway, to Donald Trump, nobody else is talking about this because nobody else sees the world with such sharp mental clarity the way I do. The Broncos are patiently waiting with a little over 22 million in cap space. They will spend seven to eight million in the rookie draft class, giving them roughly 15 million to spare. Now, that's not enough to make a surprise trade for, say, a Kirk Cousins, but it's plenty to have signed Calais Campbell or Andrew Whitworth. Unless John Elway plans on stacking up depth, making four to five more under the radar signings, I think we're all just waiting for him to make Tony Romo an offer once he's released. The Patriots re-signed Donta Hightower to a four-year deal today after having a very productive week in free agency. Guess who noticed? Everyone, but specifically TJ Ward. He tweeted, these boys out here locking and loading. We better ante up. Hashtag Broncos country, hashtag Super Bowl 52. Ante up is fucking right, TJ. Bill Belichick just went all in for 2017. And you know he ain't bluffing. But what chips does Elway have left to play? 
Is his trump card a Romo card or is there an ace up his sleeve? Is Romo an Annie up? Or has Elway been chasing the river after a suspect flop? And we're all about to see what a bust feels like. I'm not sure, but now I'm ready to go watch poker on TV. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Broncos. Subscribe on YouTube right here. You're watching it on YouTube. Just give me a little subscribe, a subscription. It's free. Also, follow me on Twitter at Brandon Perna. And again, if you want that Charlotte's Web hemp oil, cwhemp.com with my promo code, that's good. Uh, and you will, you will be happy. You will be happy about your purchase.